Welcome to Global Dispatches, a podcast about foreign policy and world affairs. I'm your host, Mark Leon Goldberg, editor of UN Dispatch. And in this show, we discuss topical global issues, have conversations with foreign affairs thought leaders and newsmakers, and give you the context you need to understand the world today. Go to globaldispatchespodcast.com to learn more. And now on with the show. In 2020, the West African country of Ghana will conduct a census. This is a massive undertaking. Some 60,000 people will be deployed across the country in an effort to count every single person in Ghana on what is known as Census Night. That night is expected to be sometime next March. Last week, in a reporting trip to Ghana, I got a sense of what this process entails. Along with a few other journalists, I shadowed census takers known as enumerators as they tested their systems in a few spots around Accra. This included a mental health hospital and an urban slum. The idea is to ensure that even marginalized groups are counted in the census. On the line with me to discuss how the census will be conducted, the kinds of questions that will be asked, and how census data can be applied to advance national goals around sustainable development, is Omar Seydou. He is the head of demographic statistics and coordinator for the sustainable development goals at the Ghana Statistical Service. We met each other last week as part of a reporting trip, which was supported by the Global Partnership for Sustainable Development Data. This conversation offers a really interesting perspective on the kind of Herculean effort that is required to conduct a census in a developing country like Ghana. And I think after listening to this conversation with Omar Seydou, you will understand why census is such a valuable undertaking for shaping government policies to advance key national priorities, particularly around sustainable development. As always, if you have suggestions of people I should interview or topics I should cover, please do send me an email. You can do so using the contact button on globaldispatchespodcast.com. I love hearing from you guys. Please keep sending me your emails. Love your suggestions. And now here is my conversation with Omar Seydou of the Ghana Statistical Service. A census is one of the biggest undertaking um, in, in terms of statistical investigation that any statistical office um, implements. Uh, in the case of Ghana, we're combining a population and a housing census, which is a recommendation for, from the UN. So this would be um, the third times we'll be doing a, a population and housing census combined. And we have tried in the last uh, three decades to maintain the 10-year periodicity of the population and housing census. So it's expected to be conducted at uh, the main field work in uh, 2020. So a census, obviously, is a very huge undertaking uh, in terms of the cost involved, uh, the, um, the number of persons engaged, uh, the kind of resources that are uh, required to, to, to undertake the census. For that reason, it's usually a challenge in many developing countries to have it done every 10 years uh, because of the huge um, logistical demand of the census. Uh, however, in Ghana, the, the, the government and the people of Ghana have been committed to ensure that a census is done every 10 years since uh, the year 2000. Mm. Uh, so we are currently um, uh, working hard. Uh, it, it is in phases. Mm -hmm. uh, the census count itself happens within a short period, but the processes leading to the census uh, start several years before the census date in 2020. As we speak now, we have um, a lot of teams on the field for, for more than a year now uh, doing a, a demarcating the entire country into smaller units called enumeration areas that uh, a, a each census uh, enumerator or census uh, field officer will be responsible for. Uh, mm -hmm. So it means that the activities have been started way long um, 
before yeah. that means and, that and i should say to... and i should say I, I witnessed some of these activities just uh last week in in ghana with you and and we'll talk about some of the things that i i witnessed some of the preparations that i witnessed that these enumerators uh were, were sort of testing some of the systems ahead of the march 2020 census um so this time around though uh when I must be, um, I, I don't think it's a first for Africa, but it's first for Ghana to be using tablets to kind of collect the data. Can you talk a little bit about sort of how these enumerators, you call them, you know, will go into towns, villages, apartment blocks, using their tablets to collect census data? Well, uh, the use of the tablets uh, to collect data it, it, it itself has, is not new to us because we have started since uh, 2014 using tablets to collect data from our sample surveys. Uh, and indeed, we just concluded an agricultural census that also employed tablets, over 4,000 tablets, uh, meaning that over 4,000 field staff. But for the population and housing census, we're talking of over 60,000 field staff, which means that uh, we would require um, more than 60,000 tablets to be used for the census data collection. Uh, so this obviously is an enormous um, uh, task. Uh, so it is the first time we are doing that with the population housing census. And the, uh, the, the good thing with this is the fact that it, it, it reduces the time between the end of data collection and the time the data is, is produced and published to make the data more relevant and timely. Secondly, it reduces the human errors associated with data entry or data capture, uh, which is usually um, uh, a feature of a census. So it makes, at least, it makes it more uh, easier to have quality data. Uh, it is difficult to have um, that numbers of people across every part of the country who know how to use the tablets to collect the census. Uh, so there is a conscious effort to ensure that um, publicity and education is part of the process to uh, sensitize the population, to get the actual uh, qualified persons who would be able to, uh, to, to use the tablet. Of course, they will be trained in the use of the uh, tablet and, of course, in the, on the census questionnaire itself. But in all this process, the use of the tablet is the first time and of course, it also has some challenges because, as we may know, not the entire part of the country is connected with electricity, which means that some of the people who would be working using these tablets would require um, using some um, uh, 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 power banks like um, uh, to charge the tablets. And where even in some cases the power bank has to be charged, it will mean that arrangement will have to be made for them to move to the nearest location where there is electricity to charge the, the power banks and of course the tablets. So these are all the things that are, are coming up. And, and of course, also you are conscious of the fact that, uh, well, the time the census will be done will be during the dry season, but then you need to be conscious of the fact that people will have to cross rivers. They will need to go to places that are, are very far away from many of the other structures. Uh, to do this. So security issues and all that are, are things that we take into consideration. Yeah. And one thing that I found pretty interesting when I sort of witnessed a sort of a trial run of these enumerators um, is to is how there seems to be this effort to sort of focus on marginalized populations that would otherwise uh, perhaps be easily missed in more conventional census taking strategies. So for example, uh, I, you know, I went with an enumerator to a mental hospital. You were there, uh, who, um, was sort of trying out a, a, um, a survey of patients at this hospital. Um, can you talk a, a little bit about sort of efforts underway to try to hone your office's strategy to target and find populations that might otherwise sort of be missed. Yeah, um, that is why we say a census, a census is trying to capture every single person who is in the, within the territory of the country. Uh, so with the census, um, we are conducting a de facto census, which means that uh, every single individual who is within the borders of Ghana um, on the census night must be captured and, and enumerated. 
Uh, so I think that the census is the single most important um, statistical investigation that provides us information on all segments of the population, which means that uh, we have to put in every effort to ensure that every single individual, irrespective of their social status, their race, um, their disability status, are captured. So we have different models of trying to capture everybody. Most of the people live in households. So um, the census focuses on the households. But of course, we are also mindful of the fact that some people live in institutions, just like the mental hostel that we visited with you. Uh, so um, effort is made to ensure that all the people within these institutions are also captured and their basic social demographic information collected. And then we are also conscious of the fact that some people are moving. They are always in transit. Okay, so there is uh, that effort also to capture all people who would be traveling either by road, by sea, or by air, who are within the territory of Ghana on the census night. So um, the census make that effort to capture every single individual because uh, as you, you, you may know, uh, the census is the only time that countries are able to ensure that everybody is inclusive and is important uh, in, in, in getting the information on that person. Because in many other cases in developing countries, we rely on sample surveys, which by design already exclude some categories of people. So once you have the opportunity of conducting a census, you want to make sure that all these individuals are captured through the census. So what sort of data are you seeking to, to capture? Uh, what sort of questions do you expect to be included in uh, the, the census? Well, the census basically would take um, the social demographic information of the individuals, the name, the age, the sex, um, uh, educational uh, uh, qualification, literacy, um, economic activities that are performed by the individuals. Um, the, uh, 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 of course, it, we, we, we have migration of the individuals also uh, uh, within the households. When we take information on the fertility for, uh, for females uh, within uh, both the households in the institutions and then the floating population, we take information on the mortality in households to know people who are passed on uh, uh, within a period of 12 months, uh, the nationality of everybody, the ethnicity of everybody, the religion everybody professes. Um, and of course, we take a lot of housing uh, information as well. Remember I said it is a population and housing census. So beyond the individuals, we take information on the dwellings of, of the households as well. So we take quite a lot of information uh, at, on, on persons' um, uh, usage of ICT, for instance. Uh, we take information on, on that. On disability, that is very critical. So for every member of the household, we want to know if the person has any form of disability as a way of um, uh, uh, disaggregating the data to identify persons who have uh, the different types of disabilities. Mm -hmm. And you want to take information on the economic activities that people are undertaking so that you also know people who are unemployed in the country, uh, people who are underemployed in, in, in terms of labor underutilization. So all these are information that are collected in the census. It's really interesting to sort of compare the kinds of information that you're collecting in, in your census to that that the United States here is trying to collect in our 2020 census upcoming and how um, sort of much broader, much deeper uh, the kind of questions uh, that the Ghanaian government seeks to elicit from its respondents uh, is then here in the United States, which is sort of like a far more sort of basic uh, census that you know they're trying to like exclude questions, for example, about citizenship um, for for political reasons. Um, so I guess my question is like, why do you seek to go so deep and so almost like intrusive with some of your questions? Yeah, um, uh, you see, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you realize that uh, <clears throat> often uh, we are unable to use our sample surveys to get a lot of information from the entire population. 
And in, in, in many developing countries, including Ghana, the administrative data system is not strong enough, is not robust enough to provide a lot of information on individuals. So the only time we are able to get this much detail of information about the individuals is through the census. And that is why we leverage the census to take as much information as we, want, we, we can take. But of course, we are also mindful of the fact that in the census, um, every single question that comes on the census questionnaire comes at a cost. So you want to limit how uh, deep uh, you go with the issues you want to take information on. But at least you want to have the basic information on every single individual in the country. A country like the United States may not need to go that way because um, there is a very robust administrative data mm -hmm. system that provides yeah. alternative sources of information. Like our DMV it, or something has our information, exactly. address, age, sex, race, all that stuff. Yeah, exactly. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. But in our case, that is not exist. Uh, that does not exist. So this is the only way we we can collect the information. Uh, nationality and ethnicity are, uh, are are questions that many countries do not see the need for, as you mentioned, political reasons or for some other reasons, do not collect information on. But in the case of Ghana, it's been one of the things we collect information on and we don't have any challenge doing so. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, these are all the reasons why we're taking all this deep, uh, detailed information because this is the only time we are able to get adequate information on the population to inform policy and inform decisions and also uh, to better target interventions. So, so let's talk about that. Um, how do you expect, like, the data collected through the census to inform policy? Can you talk a little bit about that about that process? Yeah. Um, obviously, uh, one of the things is, uh, uh, you know, in Ghana, uh, the census data is usually one of the things that is used to demarcate uh, the, the, the district to identify the local governing areas, which we call district assemblies. So usually after the census, you see that the electoral commission and the, and the, and the government would work together to um, split up some districts that they think are too large just to ensure that uh, administrating it brought to 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 the, closer to the people. Now beyond this, uh, you see that for all the provision of social services in the country largely depends on having information on the population. Being able to provide educational facilities is about knowing where we are in terms of which areas do are less uh, served with these uh, uh, services, and so then you're able to provide. Uh, these services. Uh, you want to know the proportion of the population who have access to portable water, for instance, and it is only the census that can give you adequate information on areas and localities and communities that do not have access to uh, portable water. And so then the policy uh, uh, to, to, to ensure that the decision to try to get water to these people. Um, you want to know uh, 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 the categories of people who are below the poverty line, okay? And so the census provide you that information to identify uh, uh, pockets of uh, people who actually uh, cost of, uh, uh, the standard of living is very low and so need to have social uh, uh, protection interventions to cushion them. So these are all the things that the census data have usually been used for. And in this particular case in 2020, we're going to go beyond this because this is the first time we'll be taking geolocations of every single individual and every single structure in the country. And so that will also help better target interventions so that you have a fair idea of, for instance, the total number of persons who are uh, who have some form of disability and where they are located, so that if you have interventions to 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 um, provide some social services to persons with that form of disability, you have a fair sense of where they are located and how you can reach them. Yeah, it's interesting that that sort of um, you're able using all these questions to sort of disaggregate a lot of the data to very sort of specifically target what you saw called like certain categories of people, not necessarily based on location. Yeah, exactly. And that is the idea of um, uh, uh, collecting the data on everybody, because in that case, you are able to disaggregate that, the data by location, by gender, by age, the different age categorization, 
um, uh, by income, uh, by many other disaggregations. So that would help you to better target interventions. Uh, yeah. So uh, the census night is scheduled to be, um, was it March, in, in March 2020, March 19, 2020? Is that right? Yes, so it's sometime in March 2020. Uh, so um, the census night, uh, uh, of course, it, once it is confirmed um, that it is 19th March 2020, it means that the expectation is that uh, that, that become the reference night for every enumeration, for everybody. So it is assumed that uh, uh, there is a, a big camera up there um, uh, uh, on that night, that takes a, a shot at 12 midnight. So whoever is within the territory of, of Ghana is expected to have been taken uh, at the different locations you are. So even when you are uh, uh, responding to the census questions a week or two weeks after that census night, reference is still made to that night as where exactly you were on that night. These are also done to ensure that we do not duplicate, we do not um, uh, uh, double count people, and we do not miss out some people. And, and what's kind of interesting to me also is that um, both in like localities and also nationally, it's sort of intended to be like a big holiday and there are going to be festivals and festivities. So people sort of like remember where they were the night of the party kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And that is very important. You know, um, a, 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 quite a, a big number of the population is not literate. Right. Uh, so you would want to ensure that you reduce recall errors associated with asking people questions about a week ago, about two weeks ago. So usually in communities, uh, several activities are, are done uh, on the census night uh, that will make it that are unusual activities so that it will make people remember that night. For instance, in some areas, um, there will be church bells will be uh, sounded at midnight uh, of the census night. Uh, some places there will be street uh, carnivals. There will be um, quite a lot of activities, uh, uh, police sirens and, and, and uh, bonfires. So these are all activities that are done to uh, help people to remember that night. And so then all reference is made to that night. So, so there are um, a lot of challenges uh, ahead for your office between you know now and census night. I know one of them from speaking with your colleague is just um, obtaining the the tablets, the you know over sixty thousand tablets that are necessary for uh, this project. And when I was talking to your colleague, she, they didn't know exactly where they would be sourced from. They didn't know what operating systems they would use. And they said that that was kind of a, a big variable that would impact whether or not um, the census would be able to be taken on time at, at that date. Can you talk a, a little bit about that variable and, and other potential obstacles to sort of effectively carrying out this monumental task? Yeah, um, you know, as I said earlier, um, th this is the first time we are doing um, uh, a digital census, uh, population and housing census with it, that huge number of tablets. And uh, the cost associated with procuring these tablets, obviously, is, is huge uh, because um, you would want to, uh, because after procuring those tablets and after the census, you wouldn't need that number of tablets for anything else, yeah. right? What are you going to yeah. do with 60,000 so, <laughs> tablets, right? Yeah. And, and so these are all the things that have to go in in, in, in trying to um, uh, procure a tablet. Uh, and unfortunately, not many countries on the continent have done so. And so uh, that we can say, okay, uh, country A has already completed their census and they have this number of tablets. Let Ghana go borrow those tablets for. Yes, uh, Malawi has done their census, but Malawi is a small country compared to Ghana. And so the number of tablets they have used is not the number that, of course, if we have access to those tablets, it will help us, but we we'll still need a lot. So these are the thing, the discussions that are going on. And also you want to be certain that the tablets that you deploy would have all the features that will make uh, them uh, 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 good for the census data collection. Uh, because um, I, I, usually with this mass production of this kind of equipment, you get some uh, defective equipment but you want to make sure you have that. So obviously we're going to go past the number of 60,000 just to make sure that we give room for some d defects. 
Um, but there are a lot of discussions uh, going on about the possibility of, well, one, looking at other countries within the sub-region who probably may be doing sensors this year to see if there can be that arrangement to leverage their tablet for our sensors. Uh, there are also discussions about uh, other interventions within uh, the country so that if the government, for, for instance, is able to raise the total amount of money required for the census, then maybe after the census, a lot of the tablets will be given to uh, school, school children. Uh, there are a lot of discussions going on. But of course, it is a huge cost. And, and, and obviously, um, government, uh, 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 I would have to think through all the options available to see which would be the best option. Of course, you know, the, the costs, you know, could be made up if you have like add efficiencies to your policy making process that are informed by all the data you collect, I would imagine. Exactly. Uh, well, well, Omar, thank you so much for your time. This is absolutely fascinating. And good luck. My yeah, Lord, thank good you luck. So much. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. huge. Yeah. Okay. Nice meeting you all in Accra right. last week. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you all for listening. Thank you to Omar. That was great. Very uh, helpful. And I, I should say, I can add like a little more color, uh, if you like, to uh, what it was like to kind of shadow those enumerators in the mental hospital and then in the uh, urban slum at the mental hospital. What they would do uh, is not interview the patients directly. They would uh, talk to staff and uh, have the staff kind of go through uh, the records of kind of who lives there and kind of one information they could glean from uh, their records. Uh, and that was uh, that was sort of an interesting undertaking to see kind of the records that staff keep about uh, people at this uh, hospital. The slum was a little uh, different in that. Um, you know, the enumerator's job, you know, he's testing out his his processes. We kind of split up in different groups. And in my group, um, the like the presence of a bunch of these like Western journalists and photographers kind of made the enumerator's job much more difficult. And, and the process was just sort of canceled halfway through and, and they had to go and, and test it out uh, without sort of us journalists there kind of frankly, like interfering uh, with their jobs at the mental hospital wasn't so much of a problem. But when we went out to the slum, um, it sort of the, the environment uh, was not conducive to testing out that service with a bunch of us journalists kind of looking on. Anyway, it was absolutely fascinating. Um, and uh, I'll be curious to see if uh, they're actually able to pull this off on time. I suspect they will. It was an impressive group uh, that was around the Ghana statistical service that I met with. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye.